Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coming Up Next. My name is the boat Brad Gilmore, and I am joined by the one and only Tampa Bay fan, <coughs> Jennifer There are Stoker. five of us, I'll have you know. I'm not the only Tampa Bay fan, but uh, yeah, Brad, uh, what happened there? What happens? Because uh, you were talking a lot of smack. You were talking so much smack. That's true. That's true. That's true. You know what? The team didn't come through. You know why? Because you know they why? were begging on trash cans? No. Because <laughs> they, they felt bad for your squad. You know what I mean? They oh, said, no, you, know you did not. We went there. We did it. We've, we've been in the ALCS the last four out of four years. You know. Give someone else a shot. You know, throw them a bone. Oh, Do something good for the community. Thank you so, so, so much. You're welcome. That's good charity. It doesn't matter that every other team in America has somehow, if your, fan, if your team is out of the World Series, you're a Tampa Bay fan now. Ah. It's, amazing how that's, it's amazing how that tide has turned, right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. There's something know. about rooting for the team that has the lowest payroll in baseball. I to do win like it that all. Have, I do like that you have Charlie Morton. Charlie Morton makes y'all a, 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 a team that makes me want to root for you just because of his Game 7 performance. Is Charlie and Morton why is a cheater? That? And, and why is that? Is Charlie is Morton that? a cheater to you? Why is that, Why is that, Brad? Why because are you on the cheering? Houston Astros. Mm. Is he a cheater? They were cheating on the uh, offense side, not the actual oh, pitching side. But okay. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So not everyone who bears the scarlet letter of the A on their chest is, is, is bad with you. Okay, I thought it was I see an how. H. <laughs> Astros, H Town, World Series champions. That's all whatever, I care about. Whatever. If everything goes baby. as planned, if everything goes as planned with Charlie Morton on the mound tonight, I will be having one of those too soon. Just yeah. saying. But until then, I got this sweet ass gear, the 98ers. For those of you that don't know, that's a reference to the fact that we have a stable of guys that throw 98 too. It's a. Uh, it was one of those moments where Cash was standing up for his team after one of them got buzzed with some. Uh, some pretty high and tight pitches from the uh, the Yankees, so there's that. But trust me when I say we're all enthused by that anecdote. <laughs> what? I just can't. I have to hate on Tampa Bay. I can't do it. I'm sorry. I don't I'm like the sorry. Dodgers. I'm sorry. Your you. baseball team is essentially just a low budget version of Stomp, Brad. Oh my lord. Okay. Why don't we get in? <laughs> why don't we get into the topics at hand? Many of you just saw the conclusion of the movie trivia showdown singles tournament we're going to be talking about that here in a little while i guess i think that should we start Jeremiah with Jeremiah Morris we... donated 20 dollars where's the jessica cosplay i was excited for that today oh you know i wasn't gonna say anything brad but we did have a little wager on this so much so that you crashed my appearance on the gucci verse the other night to talk smack to me and to double down on this. And you said you were going to be dressed as Jessica. This was going to be the Jennifer and the Jessica show. And um, I got to say, uh, you still look very uh, Brad Gilmore-y. Well, well, first of all, this, I, I am presenting myself as if this is what Jessica should look like. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, but in, in all seriousness, in all seriousness, I, I am going to uphold my end of the bargain. I will. It won't be this week. I did... Order F's the, in the, the chat for Brad, guys. F's in the chat for Brad. I don't know what that means. I hope it's a good thing. But I will be uh, upholding. What does F's in the chat mean? Oh, someone clue him in. Basically, it's like it's like when you acknowledge a fallen soldier in video games. You're like, oh, man, F's in the chat. Like, you just died. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad that I'm hip to that lingo. I don't know where I've, where that's been all my life. But I, I did order all the, the necessary accoutrements. To be mm. a uh, to, to to be Jessica at Amazon seems to be a little busy in the month of October for some reason. Mm. So it's coming. All everything's coming tomorrow. So I'll, we'll have it coming up next. So Thursday. you're saying you're going as Jessica next week for Halloween? You know what? Essentially, yeah, yeah. I will be Jessica. I had other uh, you know alternate plans, but mm. I guess that Jessica will be uh, will be what I do. We've all seen your Marty McFly costume, Brad. Okay. And you know what keyword there? Fly. Yeah, <laughs> super fly. Um, so let's get into, should we get, Should we talk about our reactions to the match that we just saw? Or do we need to get into, I'd say rapid fire, right? Yeah, let's go right into okay. it. Let's get right into rapid fire. This is how this segment works. We're going to have three questions. Jen and I will each take a position. 
for some reason, we haven't agreed so far at all. Maybe we will today. I feel a winds of change coming, but we will debate these and then we will throw it to the chat to see what you it's, all think. It's so funny because someone said, oh, you know, I like the show a lot more if, uh, if they were arguing legitimate arguments and not like just picking a counterpoint for the sake of arguing. And I'm like, I don't think you understand. Brad and I legitimately believe the things that we say out loud on this show. We're not arguing for the sake of arguing to to present a topic to you guys. We legit feel these ways. Like our our pre-production meetings get a little fiery sometimes because we are so we are so uh we are invested in our picks. We really Yeah, are. there we go. Yeah, we are. We are. So whoever said that uh, go play freeze tag on a uh freeway. Um Okay, our first one is, who got more magic? Who has more magic at guessing answers? Is it the magic man, as they said one time, the blue fairy himself, Josh Makuga, or Stacy? Tim Sim donated Howard? $20. Never have I ever thought of Brad to be a gambling man when I heard what he did. We both may be going down with the ship, but we will be back next season still strong. <laughs> Put money on that. Ghost Rose. Hashtag for thee. For the, for the age, <laughs> for the, age. For, for, the, the. Age. for the, so proper, for, yeah, very much so, so proper. Thank you, Timothy. Um, we have a uh, hold down H Town, but who has, in your opinion, Jen, who has the more magic at guessing the answers? Is it the Blue Fairy Josh McCuga or is it Sassy Stacy Howard? You know, I think it. I think this is an obvious answer for me anyway, and that is Stacy Howard. I've seen her pull off so many key upsets that she is the player that you watch in singles tournaments and you look at who she's going to face and you go, okay, which one of these people is going to be the person that falls to her? And sometimes it's multiple. Like she's gotten so far in tournaments sometimes just on sheer context clues. I think she looks at the questions. She looks at all the knowledge that she does have and she applies it to those questions, the type of roles actors take, uh, you know, the genres that they live in and, you know, oh, this person did this, this person did this. I think she's the equivalent of a beautiful mind when it comes to taking Schmodown questions sometimes because the polls that she ta she makes are just astronomically more impressive than so many other competitors out there when they take that guess. First of all, love that you just said the word astro in your soliloquy there. Secondly, um, I, I agree with you in the sense that she is that beautiful mind type player. She she pinpoints certain context clues, uses them to her advantage. I don't find that to be guessing. Josh McCuga literally is out there without a net. <laughs> He has no clue. He has no strategy. He has no formula. <laughs> All he has is sheer will. And somehow, some way, the Blue Fairy will pick one of those answers. We have seen him come alive oh so many times before, especially in the inaugural season of the movie trivia Schmodown, when he made it into the final. Think about this. Josh McCougar was in the finals. It was Who him. Was he competing against? <laughs> I think. I mean, he was competing against people that we know. Now that that was prior to my time, so chat, you might correct me, but I believe it was him and Mark Riley competing in the finals. So that was how great of guessing Josh McCuga had in the movie trivia showdown. We haven't seen him compete in some time. Maybe we will. Things can change. Um, however, I still think that the Magic Man is better at making those sheer out of the blue sky guesses. Here's the thing, though. I have to stop you because when you look at how the Schmodown has evolved over the years, the questions we were asking in its infancy are miles away from what we're doing now. I will admit, like, there are questions now, even in the first round, that stump me because we right. have gotten so deep that they're the deepest cuts sometimes where you're just like, it goes from, is that a deep cut or is it unanswerable? And that was something that as a writer, I had to uh, always help with. Is it asking, is this something that someone would physically know from watching this movie a couple of times? Or is this something that, unless you know that every single movie by rote, for rote, that you just couldn't guess? And that was one of those things that I just feel like, I feel like the level of questioning when, when Makuga was having his heyday in guessing is totally different than now. And I think that, his win-loss record kind of speaks for itself in that regard now. Stacy actually gets the W. Josh, he's fought in post-interviews. I'll say that. <laughs> okay. Well, agree to disagree as always. But when you talk about Josh McCuga and Elliot Dewberry, they're, they're, they're a team that 
Perhaps we will see maybe again, perhaps not. We don't know. We're going to find that out. Go to the Trivia Schmodown Quick Clips channel to see the Schmodown scene that we might be referring to. But talking about teams, there's been a lot who've come and gone over the years. No, Nothing in the movie Trivia Schmodown shocked the core of the MTS more than Anarchy. When the Anarchy Tournament was announced by Mike Kalinowski, we saw literally teams that we loved and adored be broken up and found new teammates. So my question to you, Jen Sturger, which disbanded Anarchy team? Because there are some left. You talk about corruption. Who's the boss, maybe? Uh, of course, the founding fathers. Which disbanded team would you like to see reformed next season in the movie Trivia Schmodown? I think I speak for a lot of people when I say that I don't think this team ever reached their full potential in terms of what they were capable of. And that team is Take the Cannoli. I truly miss... Drew McWeeny and Brianne Chandler coming together to play because I felt like they each brought different things to their matches. Brianne has very different uh, topics that she's well versed in, you know, dance movies, musicals, romantic comedies, horror. She's great at all those things, you know? And so when I look at those topics, I just see them fitting so well with Drew McWeeny's skill set that I just feel like this team never got the real opportunity that it deserved. Uh, and so. I'd love to see both these personalities back in the showdown together if we could make that happen. Um, again, I'm not in full disagreement here, okay? However, Drew McQueen stepped away from the game. Mm -hmm. Brianne Chandler, so for Brian. the most part, stepped away from the game, okay? She just was in the rom-com exhibition, but for the most part, she stepped away from the game as well. So the likelihood of that happening, I'd say slim to none. We were to be likely we were just saying who do we want to see get back together that's like well, me, you asking me what celebrity couple do i want to see get back together the obvious answer is britney spears justin timberlake why hasn't that happened yet for the sake of britney's sanity okay i'm just saying but you never said it had to be likely you just said who did i want to see get back together and i'm rooting for well, those two well obviously you didn't think that it would be likely that's why you think tampa bay is going to win the world series you don't deal in reality like i do brad gilmore is going to select the team that i think actually could happen it could someone happen. interrupt him with a schmobot for the love of god <laughs> yes by the way we are going to be taking schmobot questions uh throughout the entirety of the show that's what keeps this show powered moving forward the super chats and the schmobots 20 dollars or more you can interrupt the show and say whatever you want to jen sturger say whatever you want to the boat brad gilmore what it's, it's how only it interrupt brad we've already seen i don't handle this well my brain can't have that many things firing at one time okay <laughs> but, but make sure you it was like the, the voice of god coming in the first time it happened yeah we were both taken aback by it but make sure that you send them in and uh if you have something underneath that donation threshold that not activate the schmobot we'll still take those stream labs at streamlabs.com slash the schmodown and we'll answer those questions at the end of the show however there is one team that never happened that we we're supposed to get, which was Rachel Cushing and Andrew Guy, which I would have loved to see. But the one that I would pick, the one that I think that actually has likelihood of potentially happening again, because I have my thoughts about where Paulo Yama might end up next season. I just have thoughts. So Paulo Yama, we ixnay him. Take him out of the equation. All right. Even though I love final exam, I want to see a reunion of the evil geniuses. Lon Harris, let's get back JTE from out of the place of obscurity he has found himself for the past 12 months. Let's get him back in the movie Trivia Schmodown because these guys made it almost all the entire way, right? Well, the big brother John Harris came in and the Harris brothers almost made it to the way, but I saw such star potential in JTE and Lon Harris. We know what JTE was able to do with Jeff Snyder. We know what Jeff Snyder was able to do with Mark Andreco, the other team that is still around from the Anarchy Tournament, Mark Andreco and Jeff Snyder, the odd couple. We know what they can do in teams to see someone who is as great as Lon Harris has been in the 2020 season reunite with JTE. Evil Geniuses doesn't even begin to describe them, although they now have a similar personality uh, Lon Harris isn't the professor anymore. No. I still would like to see this team back together. See, that's the problem. Lon Harris is not the same player that he was before. You know, and granted, maybe that will play into them being even, even Danny better Green matched. Danny Green Kanchuk donated twenty dollars. Stanley Cup, then World Series. It's a great time in the city of eight hundred and thirteen. Is the eight one three the area code there? Yes. Okay. Eight 
813. Yes. 813. Shout out, shout out to that. Plus, our bucks are actually looking pretty good. It's a good time to be a Tampa sports fan. But back to what I was saying. When it comes to Lon Harris, I don't know that his current persona is good for JTE. I felt like Professor Lon kept JTE on the straight and narrow. I felt like he uplifted JTE's play even more so than his previous partner, Jeff Snyder, despite them having been one of the strongest teams or one of the most talked about teams in team's history here on the Schmodown. But that said, again, earlier decades of the Schmodown, earlier times of the Schmodown, the competition has only gotten fiercer and Paulo Yama is proof of that. So I just cannot see leaving Paulo Yama out in the cold to pick up JTE again for Lon Harris. I just can't. You know, a man can dream. I think it's I think it's more real than Drew McQueenie and Brian Chandler. So that's where we leave it. What do y'all think? Which team would you all like to see reunited from the Anarchy Tournament? The Anarchy Tournament again changed the movie Trivia Schmodown for the better. Which team would you like to see reunited? Leave that comment in the chat. Let's get to the next and final question. This should be easy. Which speed round format is better? Jen, do you like the buzzers or do you like the fast money version? You know, I would have said buzzers before, but that for me uh, is a difficult thing because hand-eye brain coordination is not my strong set. So I feel like fast money is actually where it's at. I feel like it takes out the, the ability of someone to have fast reflexes and it just makes it about their knowledge. So I'm going to have to stick with fast money on this one. I think that it's something that it's one of those things, kind of like with the, the three pitch, the three batter rule in baseball. I think that this is something that when we come back into studio play should honestly be something that stays you know, in the game. I just don't know how you would do it with both competitors being in studio. Uh, I mean, they figure it out on Family Feud, right? We'd have to probably put some more implementations in. And Jen, history is about to be made because I agree with you. I love ah! the money version. I do. I think that, and you, and you pointed out the reason perfectly it takes the athletic component out of the game right even though let's be clear it's not necessarily an athletic feat to slam down a button i'm just saying the for not. me for me my hand eye coordination in terms of how fast i can get something done is is slower on the uptake it's about how fast your neurons fire and your ability to do it which is why if you don't get the buzzers in time to practice before a title match and you've never been in a title match you're at a severe disadvantage that's why i just feel like this fast money play it's just so much more evenly matched you know in terms of that where it's like the the essentially the 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 challenger coming in isn't at a severe disadvantage for having never, if they've never played in a title match. I, you know, I agree. And the, and the people that I think about the first name that comes to mind, Rachel Cushing, uh, Dan Murrow, these are some of the most elite players of all time. And who knows how many championships would have been around the waist of the crusher had that speed round buzzer format not been there. If it's purely about knowledge and, and, and knowing the information in here, I think that I think that players like Rachel Cushing would have been quadruple belted, and there's not she would have won the team championships by herself. You know what I mean? She would Absolutely. she would have been uh, far, if, very far. And she take thing on a handicap Merle. match for sure. She, she could have, and the same, same thing with Dan Merle. I mean, any of the players who struggle with that hand eye coordination, like you saw. Remember, I always refer back to the spectacular when Brendan Meyer had a conniption fit, literally on stage, trying to hit the buzzer, and that's what it, the table was looking like. You know what I mean? We, we, I don't even want to see that anymore. I like it. Now, let me ask you this, and then we'll move on to love it or leave it. My question is. Some people, myself included, have floated the idea of that being the champion's advantage where they can choose which type of speed round they would want. Do they want the buzzer or do they want the fast money? What do you feel about that? Do you think that would be a fair champion's advantage or should we stick to spinners and opponents not being on the wheel? Hmm, that's a great question. Um, I do think that there it's almost like a home field advantage. You know what I mean? In terms of letting them make those choices and i do feel like there is some merit in allowing that kind of stuff to happen but I, it should either be one or the other i don't feel like you should be able to tilt two rounds in your favor um and i honestly i don't necessarily i don't think that spinner's choice you know an opponent's choice should be on the wheel that's, that's just a personal thing i think that that should be completely off the table regardless of what people choose because it's just it makes for a terrible match if you hit one of those in a 
championship brand. And, and I think that match. that's exactly in a title match. I just feel like it's just it totally wrecks with the flow of the game. And it sometimes it just puts you it sets you up for a blowout. And no one wants to watch a title match that's a blowout. PLD, voice of God, can you tell us what is the chat saying? How are they feeling? Do they want to keep buzzer or they want to go with the um do they want to go with the fast money version? Well, it looks like it's a little 50-50. I mean, I'm really? personally surprised that as an Astro fan, you don't like the buzzers. But, um, <laughs> my own concept is dead. that I like the... <laughs> I'm dead. <laughs> I like the old mono a mono the intimidation factor. It's not about the physical hand. It's about how his brain comes up with it fast. And there's nothing more intimidating than, than Ben Bateman getting against Dan Merle that match. Getting it. Bam, 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 bam. It's intimidation factor is more mono mono one on one. You get that kind of battle going on. And that's what I prefer myself. Okay, okay. Well, hmm. we you know, we will see what the when we return to in studio matches, what ends up happening. For some reason, I feel like they're going to go back to the buzzer. Yeah. I would like to see fast money. But let's let's talk about one other thing before we go to our first break. <sighs> Canada PH- Rocks donated so. twenty dollars. History is made, but I disagree with both of you. The money round is inferior and mostly due to the way that the scores are tallied and revealed. It stops the show dead and takes out all the drama. Okay, that that I understand your concern. However, that has been in the live format. If you watch yeah. today's speed uh, speed round, the, the fast money round, they were able to do it as they answered questions or got questions correct or wrong. You would see the score instantaneously. So if they kept that version, which in most studio matches they could do, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. Let's move on, though. Uh, thank you for your donations, everybody. Again, more Streamlab donations means you get more me and more gin, and that's what everybody wants, But if you right? interrupt Brad, you just get more me, and I feel like that's what we all want here, right? Okay, okay. <laughs> Jim. Yes. You've been somewhat vocal about Chandru, the chosen, the Intergeekdom champion of the world. He has kind of turned a new leaf, and he, he uh, became whom he really is now, I mm-hmm. feel like. We saw him after... Uh, William the Beast Bibiani and Brendan the Kid Meyer, by the way, congratulations to Shazam for winning those movie trivia showdown championships. Um, we saw after that victory, thank you, uh, They, we saw Chandru reign on the parade. So my question is, do you love it or leave it? Chandru's new persona as of late. His new persona as of late. I feel like this is who he always was. My mm. whole issue with Chandru's behavior is his behavior in the, in the title match, the team's title match, post interviews it took away from shazam's moment in my opinion and for someone who i as much as i thought corruption may have had this match in hand for as someone who is excited to i'm always excited to see new young competitors get the belt and look bibs has had a belt before no big deal but to have the kids first title belts be kind of overshadowed by this ongoing feud between chance and chandro to me it just kind of left this like the sad taste in my mouth where I was just like, you know, I feel bad for him. And not necessarily, not just that. How much matter is he trying to make Shannon Barney? Like, are you just dumb? Like, who wants to bring that thunder on themselves? You know what I mean? Luckily, Mike Kalinowski is like a tough cookie himself. Otherwise, I can't imagine what the two of them in the relationship must be like. That said, I never thought... I would find myself at a position coming into Spectacular that I would almost be feeling sympathetic towards Chance Ellison. Like, I never thought that. I'm I'm the same person that when I've seen Chance mouth off to, like, veterans in the league and, like, make veterans in the league so upset that they brought them to tears, I've been the one that pulls him aside and shakes him, literally shakes him by the collar of his leather jacket which should be for Breeze, by the way, um, under those studio yes. lights. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. Pleather never ages well under studio lights. But just fun fact, I can vouch for myself as well. But I never thought I would find myself coming into Spectacular feeling this way where I'm sympathetic to Chance Ellison. And I'm like defending Chance Ellison going, no, no, no. But look, he's... He's done X, Y, and Z. He's busted his ass to get there. Like, he deserves to be inner geekdom. Like, think about it this way. Who do you think would be a better candidate for inner geekdom player of the year? Like, Chance had to go through far more matches. True, true. But it doesn't matter how many matches he went through. 
because there's only one champion. And Chandru is the champion. Here's the thing. We think about guys like Conor McGregor, right? We think about people like the nature boy, woo, Ric Flair, right? When these individuals won those championships, they, they elevated not only within their perspective sports, they elevated within their personalities. We saw who they really were when they had the gold wrapped around the waist. Chandru the Chosen is exactly that. I believe in the movie trivia Schmodown, he is the chosen one. And he has risen to the top of the inner geekdom division. And him crashing the parade of William the Beast Bibiani and Brendan the Kid Meyer, two of the most beloved personalities we have in the movie trivia Schmodown. You know what I thought when I saw that? Do you really want to know what I thought? I thought it was perfect. <laughs> I loved it. Give me more. Why would you leave this? This is exactly who Chandru needed to be. I saw this in him the very first day. I called Chandru one time and said, I don't believe you when you're out there. I don't believe you. And then after that phone call, I noticed a difference. I'm not taking credit for it, but I noticed a difference. Kind of sounds like you're taking credit for it. I, I'm not taking credit for it. But I saw a difference. And this man ended up going from a boy into a man and said, you know what? I'm gonna grab my set. I'm gonna let you know what time it is and I'm taking no prisoners. And that is what the PhD himself, Chandru the Chosen has done and I love it and I wanna see more of it. But y'all let us know, all right? Y'all let us know what you think. We're about to go to a quick break here on Coming Up Next. When we come back, we're gonna look at corruption. Who would you, who would you keep? Who would you toss to the side? All that and more. I'm coming up next. I feel comfortable using Schmodown jargon in everyday life. Spin from the wheel, not the pegs, kids. I'm able to recall movies at the drop of a hat. Mom, what's that movie with that guy in it? You mean Spies in Disguise with Will Smith and Tom Holland? <laughs> and that's why you should vote for me, Brianne Chandler, Miss Movies, for your exhibition competitor. Welcome back to Coming Up Next. I am the boat Brad Gilmore, joined by Jen Sturger. Jen, what's your nickname? Well, you need a moniker. Um, Jessica, obviously. <laughs> I'm joined by Jessica Jennifer Sturger. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Um, it doesn't. You know, I just get called Sturge by all my friends. Like, that's the, it's the short. Yeah, Sturge. It's not necessarily You sound like a character flattering. in a 1980s karate video game. It's the Sturge. You got to be hey. Sturge. Hey, it strikes fear in the hearts of my opponents in this valley. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. Um, we're going to be talking about a new segment that we have here on Coming Up Next. We're going to be discussing movers and shakers. Now, you might wonder, what does that even mean? Okay, it doesn't mean the happening people and their schmodown to use 1950s vernacular. No, it means going into next season, you're only allowed to keep three or you're only allowed to offer three contracts prior to the draft. And we want to look at a faction every single week here and pick out which three we would take. And we'll come to a consensus between Jen, the Sturge, Sturger, and I 
and decide who we should offer up to whatever manager that is to keep. So this week, we're talking corruption. Why wouldn't we? Coming off of what we just saw, <sighs> Jen Sturger, which, by the way, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. Did I give enough uh, warnings? Yes, but just come back in like 10 seconds, guys. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Here it is. Adam Collins beat Jeff Snyder and is now going into the Schmodown Spectacular representing corruption. He is, I believe, six and O oh in his movie trivia Schmodown career, making him on a very, very short list. I wish Frank Janish was here and he could tell me. I think perhaps Paul Oyama did that. Mm -hmm. uh, I could be wrong. I think I think there's 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 someone else maybe who's gone six and oh. Someone will correct me. However, uh, seeing as that we just saw that, I think, Jen, that we can agree that that would be an obvious person for Shannon Barney to retain on her roster. Yes or no? Absolutely. And I think that it's a he's the first person that I think Shannon should look at. I understand her loyalty to Mike and to Chance, but I feel like in this case, you have to stick with young talent. You have to stick with up-and-coming talent. You have to stick with people that are thriving in this type of format because as far as we know, this is how it is going to be for the foreseeable future. And Adam Collins has all of that. He has thrived. He's becoming one of those people that everyone is is threatened by and people don't take him lightly anymore. And so I think he's one of those opponents that I just think will take you far when it comes to these singles tournaments and rack up those points for you and keep you in the standings. Yeah, he, he's been beyond impressive. And I think that um, if there was any conversation about Rookie of the Year like we had a couple weeks ago, conversation's over. Conversation's over. A Adam Collins has it wrapped up with a nice, pretty pink bow on it. And I think that he would be the first person that you would need to retain because his talent, we as we see, is now limitless, in, in my opinion. He's, he's only going to go as far as Adam Collins wants to go. If he wants to be the champion, I think he could do it. If he wants to be team champion, I think he could do it. The way this guy studies, who knows if he would be a beast in inner geekdom, I wouldn't doubt it. So if we're going to f for sure keep Adam Collins, who else will you keep in Jen Starcher? <sighs> Listen, again, I understand Shannon joined this league because of Mike. She got brought into this league, most people don't know this, because of myself and Mike because I was having her come around. I was actually the person that introduced them. I think a lot of people know that story now, but she oh, was coming. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It was actually really funny because I essentially, I told Mike that Shannon was interested in him, but Shannon had no idea who he was. And then I put them both in the same room. And I was like, yeah, she's she's totally, yeah, she like thinks you're so hot and blah, blah, blah. But I had to actually coach Mike through it. And I was like, listen, don't show up in any Batman shirts, okay? <laughs> don't embarrass yourself. Wear a Henley, rock some Dexter S, you know, tight shirt and just, you know, show off the goods and we'll see, <laughs> let's get this done. So anyways, that's how they met. Uh, I ended up basically making them take care of me while I feigned being drunk for the evening. But all of that aside. The more you know. It, exactly. Shannon, it was at Jay Washington's birthday party too. And so Jay was like, seriously? Seriously? You didn't bring a girl for me, but you brought one for Mike? <laughs> Anyways. But so, so I, I was one of the people that really insisted that Shannon would be a great part for this league. And I think once she was so, she found herself coming to Mike's matches to support him and being so vocal about the results of them. And she found herself on the Facebook group. We all know how that's gone. And, uh, <laughs> and so I understand her loyalty to Mike, but that said, I think Chance has been a much more clutch player for her in the recent years. And I just don't know that Mike Kalinowski, his head is, is in it as it normally is, you know? I think this pandemic has messed with a lot of people, and I think that it's actually given Mike a chance to explore other things that he's interested in. And in that same vein, I think that it necessarily has kind of taken away his focus from being the studier that we know him to be. Because a lot of times when he's pulled off those crazy upsets or he's dominated in the matches that we've seen him dominate in or going, you know, gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rachel Cushing, things like that, he was studying his ass off. And I just don't know that that's what he's doing nowadays with the way things are panning out in this current state of the schmodown. So that said, I think that Chance is a valuable player to Shannon in the fact that he can compete in teams. He can compete in inner geekdom. And obviously he can compete in singles. And those are the kind of players you want to keep on your roster. 
Well, so, okay. I mean, I don't disagree that Chance Ellison needs a, obviously. He's her number two. He's her number two. I, okay. And I'm, I'm with you there. But honestly, my one, two, three was Adam Collins, Chance Ellison, and Mike Kalinowski. Now, I know pe- there's been chatter online that, hey, you know, maybe we'll throw Mike in the draft. We'll mix things up a little bit. And guess what? Shannon's going to get him anyway. No one's going to draft Mike Kalinowski. Well, they try to play I that think game he would. Year. I think he would Eli Manning himself. And if someone did draft him, he'd Jeremiah be like, I'm not Morris playing for you. Twenty dollars. If Thanks, I was Jeremiah. Shannon, I would keep Adam Collins' chance and try to get Oyama and team him with chance. I've heard rumors they are good friends and two of the best, plus they played in three leagues and Oyama was chance's close match. Jeremiah, come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. What a phenomenal idea. Paul Oyama, Shannon steals him over from swag, teams him with Chance Ellison. And then you have Adam Collins. You have three of the greatest, uh, quote-unquote, fan league players of all time on one team. And you have generational wealth with that. Chance Ellison and Paul Oyama, I think, collectively are like 32 years old if you add both of their ages together. They have a long time left here in the movie trivia showdown. Adam Collins, this is his rookie year. You know what? I love you, Mike. You know you're my guy. But Adam Doesn't Collins. Doesn't sound like it. Doesn't Chance sound like Ellison, it at all. Paul Oyama, I don't know. I think that's, if I was Shannon, that's what I would do. Hmm. I don't disagree with you, but I feel like I feel like if that happened, Shannon would be sleeping on the porch. <laughs> we, we will. You're see. trying to start something in that household, man. <laughs> we we will see. Now, y'all, let us know which three Shannon should keep and what team do you see her forming next season? They are formidable and still in swinging distance to win the entire thing, um, especially after today's win. Let's talk about. One other thing here, real quick, and then we're going to we're going to play some fan promos because this is what I wanted to do. Jen, you remember a few weeks ago we threw it out there. We said, you know, we want to see how many of y'all are wordsmiths. How many of y'all are at the level of John Roca? How many of you are at the level of Jeff Snyder when it comes to engaging the audience via a promo, a promotional video, if you will. Mm-hmm. And we so are Jeff- so appreciative for everyone that sent those in. We we got a lot of submissions, and we are so grateful for everyone that did that. If your video did not make the cut today, don't fret. You're going to have plenty of chances to talk smack on your favorite Schmodown players. Uh, but that's it, Brad. Yeah, yeah we, only, we only were able to choose three out of all that were sent in. But here are the three promos and that we got. I heard we got, like, a special one, too. Uh, stick around, guys. Things we're about got to see if you can do what you do on the microphone against Jeff Snyder. Let's take a look. I love horror movies. Mark Riley loves horror movies. I am a horror movie. I would have really liked to see a match with Mark Riley and I going head to head to head to separate head about scary things. Black sheep of the Schmodown. I heard you put a call out to fans to crawl up out of our basements, come from behind our keyboards. Well, here I am, Jeff. Be careful what you wish for. You call yourself the promo master, yet I'm pretty sure the moment Paulo Yama choked and handed you a victory you probably didn't deserve you threw your celebration out the window because you were so damn shocked you couldn't go through with it it's okay though jeff the darkness comes for everybody eventually just remember in this case you asked for it good luck just look and Jeff Snyder quitting against William Bibiani in 2018. That's all the evidence you need. 
My name is Kyle Hudson. I'm a fan, and I'm here to tell you that Jeff Snyder is a quitter. Jeff Snyder is a loser. Ethan Irwin might one day surpass the GOAT, Dan Merle. The only way Dan Jeff Snyder is going to get close to GOAT, Dan Merle, is by licking his bootstraps. Jeff Snyder is a great Schmodown competitor. Jeff Snyder is Josh Makuga with more gravitas, and you'll see that today. Snyder, you laid down this challenge, and I, I, I don't get it. You got this idea that you're some great wordsmith. You can cut these promos on people. You're an excellent player. No, what you are is somebody, you're a mediocre player on a hot streak. And uh, I feel like you're coming into the twilight of your career, and uh, you've got nothing to show for it. You are a relic of a bygone era. So, Jeff, Bubby, just give it up, man. Just give it up. There's people coming for your spot. There's better players out there than you. And you know it. Just ride off into the sunset. Put that cowboy coat on with the fur on the inside that you got from the Brokeback Mountain set. And just ride off into the sunset. Because, well, you want to look at the Schmodown and say, I wish I could quit you. The Schmodown has passed you by. Greetings from Coyote Country. This message is for Lord Jefferson Alistair Snyder. Jefferson, I've heard a lot recently that you believe you can cut the ultimate Schmodown promo, and I'll give credit where credit is due. You're very good at picking up your camera and running around your parents' house while making silly faces. But I think we can add it to the list of skills on your resume that include, but are not limited, to writing in permanent marker on t-shirts and selling them on eBay, peddling your own toenail clippings at yard sales, and doing entire strip teases to the Benny Hill theme. All impressive stuff, but none of it is gonna serve you in this final. Because this final, it's a reckoning, Jefferson. It is the ultimate correction. And at the end of it, I think everybody's going to realize who wants to play Dan Merle more. So strap yourself in, do your dance, and I will see you in the finals, my friend. Good luck. Welcome back. Wow. To coming up next here on the Schmodown Entertainment Network. My name is The Boat, Brad Gilmore. I'm joined by The Sturge. Ben Sturger. <laughs> it's a working title. Calm down. I was so impressed with those promos we just got. I caught myself laughing out loud at a lot of that. I am just... Thank you so much to everyone that submitted. Uh, that last one, uh, Collins, how do we... PLD, how did we let that one slide in there? I mean, phrasing. He, he's got the right connections, I guess. He must have just let in and put him under a fake name or something, but that, mm. that's what he does, you know? We should probably do a better job screening these promos. Maybe well, we should. <laughs> but he was great. He was great. Uh, uh, and, and if you haven't seen the tournament final, oops, but definitely go see it because uh, that was a great promo. And uh, we're excited to see the future of Jeff Snyder and Adam Collins in the movie Trivia Schmodown. But it is time this week for the Gucci Isms of the Week. Oh, it's one of my favorite parts of the week, to be honest now, Brad. It really is. I, 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 here was what was funny is you and I, while you, like you said, I crashed your Gucci verse segment the other night. And uh, what was funny is Gucci's like, all right, so here's the deal. I'm going to read you a couple quotes, and you tell me who you think they are. All right? <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> he read, like, five quotes in a row, and they were all from him. Yeah. It was like, I don't think he understands how this game is played at all, but it made it really funny. <laughs> so we're going to – we have three of them for you this time around, and uh, we want to see what you think in the chat. So, chat, make sure you weigh in. Paul, you uh, let us know, PLD, let us know what the chat is saying. But here we go. Are we ready for our first Gucciism, Jen? We sure are. All right, here is the quote. And here it is Van Gogh, 
people told him, you can't be a great painter. You only have one ear. You know what he said? I can't hear you. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, this is a tough one for me. I I feel like it might be, it might be Gucci. It sounds very good. Well, here's the problem now. I'm reading everything in his voice. You know what I mean? I know. Like in my head. I'm like, yeah, Van Gogh said I can't hear you. You know? So I'm going to say, I'm going to say this is not Gucci. Really? I'm going to say this is not Gucci. Who do we got, guys? Who do we Who got? got? Do y'all think Gucci or not Gucci? PLD, what's the chat saying? Chat is split right down the middle. It's basically every other one. Gucci, not Gucci. Gucci, not Gucci. I don't know what to say myself at this point. Definitely sounds Gucci-esque to me. I think I got to go Gucci myself. All right. <laughs> Let's Survey reveal. Survey says. Was this Gucci or was it not? What's up, guys? Gordon Minshew here. <laughs> you know, people told him, you can't be a great painter. You only have one ear. You know what he said? I can't hear you. <laughs> Gardner Minshew, the Gardner real uh, Minshew. Uncle Rico of the NFL. <laughs> What a character that guy is. I'm sure oh my God. The, 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 the ownership group is happy they spent that money. Um, hey, let's he's go. good for marketing. He's great for marketing. At least people know the name of the quarterback now for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, rest in peace, Blake Bortles. Not rest in peace, but you know what I mean. Um, quote number two. Here we go. <laughs> Here's the quote. I don't want to be the guy that makes the hooker calls but I do want to be around the guy that makes them. That is 100% Gucci. <laughs> That's 100% Gucci. I'm sorry. I don't want to be the guy that makes the hooker calls. But the logic the is slightly skewed, like just slightly skewed. Oh, so, that's got to be him, it's gotta right? It's got to be Gucci. Yes. That's got to be Gucci. PLD, you want to weigh in? Do you think this is Gucci? How could that be anybody other than Gucci? And uh, the chat is pretty much 100% agreeing with us as well. I think this has got to be dead. It's dirty. It's slimy. It's slightly creepy. And slightly. Somehow, somehow there's a hint of wisdom there. Is it Gucci or is it not? And bottom line, you're a loser. <laughs> it is the one and only Tom Dagnino. God, I love this game so much. Oh, my God. So I stupid. I love this game. Game so stupid. So we could literally play this fun. all night. We really could, but we're, we have time for one more this week. We have time for one more this week. So we're going to get into the last quote. Here it is, guys. Y'all doing well so far. On your report card, you have an A. Let's see if it will remain after this one. There is one word in America that says it all. And that word is, you never know. <laughs> So wait, the word is you never know? The or word is? The word is. You never know. Uh, <laughs> All three of them. I don't think it's Gucci. It's bad, but I don't think it's Gucci. I could be wrong on this one, though. I'm going my Gucci, Gucci. My Gucci meter is a little sure. off today. Your Gucci, your, yeah, Gucci dar isn't working, but for me, him making the mistake of saying one word and then saying you never know, this is Gucci for sure. <laughs> Um, uh, I mean, a PLD. What's your guess? My guess is it's got to be Gucci because I can hear him. I can hear the pause. The yeah, the one word. You never know. <laughs> right. right. RV three. Reveal it for the people. Is it Gucci or is it not? And Joaquin Andujar has retired. The first nine men that he has faced. How? Oh. Joaquin Andujar. Look at that. Okay, well, I was wrong. Jen, you were right. That I didn't know who it was, though. I'm like, that was a good pull. That was a good pull. Whoever's now, uh, pulling these up for us, they're doing a bang-up job. Yeah, that is good. If you got three for three in the chat, uh, put an emoji in the chat that reminds you of Tom Dagnino. <laughs> I'm oh, scared God. of what that could possibly be. But if you got all three right, put an emoji in the chat that reminds Brad, you of Brad, they Tom don't Dagnino. make windowless van emojis, okay? <laughs> Dumpsters? <laughs> they should though um okay guys 
We're about to wrap up here, and we're going to get to your Streamlabs and Super Chat questions, so submit those right now if you have anything for Jen or I. Even a general inquiry, non schmodown related you would like to know, you can send that in right now. Streamlabs.com slash the schmodown. Also, you can use the Super Chat feature, but we'd like for you to use Streamlabs because we get 100% of it. Not Jen and I, but the Schmodown Entertainment Network. YouTube takes 30%. It's fine if you feel comfortable that way, but Streamlabs.com slash the schmodown is the place to put it. But Jim, before we get to questions... Um, we do need to talk about something that was announced this week in the movie trivia Schmodown, and it is about somebody that you and I both have a hell of a lot of respect for and a hell of a lot of love for. Kevin, the smasher Smets, revealed that he has a cancer diagnosis, and he is battling stage three colon cancer um, at the current moment. Now, from everything that he said on SEN, it seems like he's going to be okay. And we are going to pray, hope, and wish that that will remain the case. And I think that it is. But um, we just want to send out our love to Kevin the Smasher Smets because when I first saw him in the movie Trivia Schmodown, I remember calling Christian and I said, this guy is Goldberg. This is who this is, like his character, right? Mm -hmm. And then I got to know him and I got to know how intense he was about his studying habits. He was revealing stuff to me. And then he became one of the people that I talked to probably most often in the movie Trivia Schmodown. We have our own little group chat, group chat called the P-Squared Boys. If you know, you know. And um, I just love the guy and can't say enough about him. So I'm just wishing him the speediest of recoveries and, um, you know, smash cancer. Smash cancer, one hundred percent. You know, I there's been, I'm I'm one of the the, the tough love kind of uh, veterans in the league in terms of I'm not necessarily a competitor, but I've been around for a while now at this point, and um, I I care very deeply for this league and for the integrity of this league and for the competitors in this league, and I can only think of maybe one other rookie that's come in and impressed me with the way that he handled himself, the way Smets has handled himself. Uh, the guy is a class act. He will drop everything for his friends. Uh, the warmth that he exudes, uh, aside from kayfabe, um, mm -hmm. is just unparalleled. He's one of the most genuine people and friends that I've I've had the pleasure of getting to know through this league. And um, I just I just my heart broke when I when I found out the news. And I am in this guy's corner. 100% and I tell him every day I'm like uh whatever you need you know if you need a, a babysitter from time to time and you know I can't I can't vouch for my nanny skills it's been a while but you know uh <laughs> we'll see um but anything that I can do to help him out and I know that this community feels the exact same way um we have your back Smets and if you see this just know that we're all rooting for you and we'll do anything possible to help you smash cancer and, and I want to throw it to PLD here in just a moment, but before I do, I, I want to say one thing that, that Kevin said on SEN that I want to echo the same sentiment to everyone listening. If there's anything that doesn't feel exactly right, um, go get screened, go get checked, especially if you're in that age range where colon cancer could be more likely. Um, someone in their in their 20s, maybe not, but Kevin was is in his early 40s, and that's when they say that you know you can start seeing the signs of that. So schedule a colonoscopy if you're feeling some issues. Make sure you do it and do some research on that as well, because the only reason that Kevin has a good prognosis as the, as it remains at this moment in time is because his wife said, "I need you to go look at this because maybe it's not right." And you know, at first he thought it was no big deal, and then he went. And he figured out it was a very big deal, and that's the reason why he's in a good position now because he got screened and he got checked. But PLD, what would you like to say about Kevin the Smasher Smets? Well, I could say is when he reached out to me, my heart broke. Uh, initially, it was my first thought. My second thought was cancer picked the wrong guy. Uh, he's going to come through this uh, stronger than ever. He's going to smash cancer. But I echo everything you've said as well. Get checked out. Uh, it's worth it for you and your family and everything else. Also, we should put out there that uh, Paul Preston did start a GoFundMe page. Um, and it's been on Twitter all over. You can find that or on the link myself right now. But uh, it's definitely going to be needed in the future. Uh, we love Smash here, uh, the Action Army as well. Um, so Smash, we got you. We got your back, man. That's all I got to say. Cancer picked the wrong guy. I think that that was really well said. And uh, I see John Kaiser was in the chat, and he says he's going to destroy this thing like he's done so many times in the movie. Should we slow down to his competitors? We're going to see him get the W in this one. No doubt about it who knew you the dungeon had those kind of streaming capabilities 
Who who knew? Who knew they had a Wi Fi? Sorry, always dungeon? always trying to lighten the mood around here, but we love Absolutely. you, Smets, and um, let's kick this thing's ass. All right. Yeah, we're going to now. Let this is our time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This is our time for the question. Streamlabs, Super Chats that we may have missed or not gotten throughout the show. Um, is it, I believe, is it PLD or RB3 who's going to read those off for us? Uh, I can handle it for today, if that's okay with right. you. Right. Yeah. Um, we do have uh, one that we have a Super Chat that came in from D Train. Thank you so much, D Train. He said, Thoughts on the Snyder versus Collins match? We kind of talked about it a little bit already. Um, we do have another um, Streamlab coming in from. Uh, Resident King, who says, I think that the, uh, referring to which Anarchy team would you reform, uh, I think the Paddington 2 and the Self-Righteous Brothers were also great teams mm -hmm. that I think are likely to reconnect. Uh, Paddington 2 was great. Matt Atchity, Alonzo Duralde. I think Alonzo's probably in a better situation right now, um, uh, given, given he's in there with Whitney Seibold. However, Matt Atchity, once he figures out the rules... <laughs> He's unstoppable. What do you think, Jim? He's only been playing this game how long? Uh, five years, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you know. What do you think? Did you did you like do you like Alonzo and Matt Atchity together more, or do you like uh, Whitney Seibold and Alonzo together more? Hmm, that's a tough one for me. I, I mean, I'm always gonna have a soft spot in my heart for Matt Atchity, but I, I do feel like. Seibold has a much more complete partner now. I do, I do feel that way. And um, we'll see what happens. But I, I just, Seibold's one of those interesting competitors in the Schmodown where I feel like he's just a step away from being like the aggressive competitor that we need to be. We need him to be in order to get to that next level. He's one of those people that I'm just, I just haven't felt like he has always lived up to the knowledge that I know he possesses. And I don't know what that will take, whether it's a, a, a better manager or a manager that knows how to communicate with him more effectively and to get the best out of him or what, you know? Yeah, um, I, I, I like where he's at now. We'll see what actually comes in the future. RB3, did we miss anything else? Um, let me see here. We do have uh, Jeremiah Morris uh, donated a stream lap. Thank you so much, Jeremiah. Man, I hate the fast money round. It's the thing I hate most. I like the strategy of knowing when to answer and having to beat your opponent. The buzzers make it against your opponent more than just answering questions. I would be very disappointed if it stays. Uh, well, you know what? I disagree with you, but it. I was looking back through the chat during one of our breaks, and it looks like Christian Harloff was pretty active in the chat, and he says, Oh, no. <laughs> sorry, guys. At least I think it was Christian. He said, Sorry, guys. Buzzer's probably gone. I mean, Buzzer's are probably back next year, and Fast Money's gone. So maybe maybe there's still a glimmer of hope for the Fast Money, but it looks like Buzzer's might return. If there's like a maybe a big groundswell of support for the, for the Fast Money round style, we'll see that again next year. Uh, was that it, RB3? Um, we had Jeremiah Morris put in another one. Uh, thank Thanks, you so Jeremiah. much, Jeremiah. Uh, Gucci, not Gucci, is one of my favorite games. Also, hashtag Smash Cancer. Yes. Yeah, awesome. thank you, Jeremiah, by the way, man. I really appreciate all your support and love for Jen and I and the Schmodown Entertainment Network. I believe that is now it, RB3? That is it. All right. Hey, next week, we're going to be back. Same time, same place. Thank you. Well, for you won't be back. Jess Jessica and Jen will, be, will be back next week for a special Halloween edition of Coming Up Next. That is Jen the Sturge Sturger. On the boat, Brad Gilmore. Shout out to PLD, our executive producer, also the man behind the boards, the R to the B to the three. Shout out to Christian Harloff, Mark Ellis, and everybody at Sky Valley Entertainment that makes this show possible. On the boat, that's Jen. This is Coming Up Next, and we'll come back next week. Something like that. Mm. Jess, really? See you next Thursday.